Hello, hi, and assalamu alaikum. Uh, welcome back to my class. Uh, I'm sure you are fine and uh, doing great with your studies. Today, I have uh, brought for you one very interesting topic, the process of uh, writing. I'm encaging the monster today. I know for many uh, writers, this uh, writing thing is quite intimidating, harrowing, and even, you know, uh, mysterious or frustrating. Uh, why is that? Reasons may be many, because writers, you know, they have to keep a lot many things, I would say a thousand and one things, you know, in mind at the same time, simultaneously. For example, you know, writers have to think about the topic, you know, they want to write about, uh, the subject, you know, that topic, you know, lies in, uh, the purpose of their writing, the readers also, and of course, they have to collect a lot many ideas, you know, they could really go about conveniently. Besides this, you know, there are some, a lot many technical areas, you know, which uh, writers, you know, they really ponder and consider also. For example, vocabulary, what words they are going to use, their language choices. I mean, are they going to use uh, easy words, difficult words, idioms, phrasals, and they have to uh, keep in mind the organization, you know, of their writing also, uh, the sequence, the progression, you know, and then uh, signaling words, and uh, of course, paragraphing also, the size of paragraphs, the central ideas, you know, in the paragraphs, and then mechanics as well. I mean, they have to be very careful about the writing, uh, the spelling, you know, punctuation, etc. And uh, then, of course, uh, they'll be, you know, uh, worried about, uh, you know, grammar thing, uh, the verb choices, the agreements, you know, uh, the right use of pronouns and the references, uh, you know, articles, for example, etc. And then, you know, going down to the structure part of the writing, the types of sentences, you know, the structure patterns, for example, they have to, you know, keep in mind how to bring, uh, you know, writey in the, you know, writing so that, you know, they could really grab readers' attention and, of course, uh, the content thing, you know, they also have to be very careful about. Uh, for example, uh, relevance, you know, in the content, originality in the content, you know, logic inside the content, the overall, you know, fabric of argumentation, you know, uh, they uh, have to keep in mind. And, you know, last but not least, plagiarism. Uh, something, you know, a sword, you know, lurking on their heads that, uh, uh, you know, uh, use your own ideas, you know, use your own expression. Don't, don't you know, own someone's, uh, you know, uh, expression or ideas without uh, naming them, without uh, acknowledging them, you know. So all these things actually make this act uh, harrowing, make this act, you know, quite scary. But if we, uh, as I said, you know, uh, at the start, Today, we'll try to cage this uh, monstrous, you know, act. How? Very simple. Bring, breaking it, you know, into smaller pieces, into smaller steps, which uh, should be manageable, approachable, you know, and uh, Stephen R. Covey's, you know, uh, idea that uh, you would be able to begin with the end in mind. Of course, when you, you know, haphazardly start things, you know, your beginning, your ending, of course, nothing is clear unto you. But uh, when you, uh, you know, shift or you can say apply a model, for example, which we call as the process model of writing, what, you know, it helps you. It can, uh, you know, help you see the whole thing, you know, in just one glance, where I'm starting and where I'm reaching. Look here. As far as, you know, the process uh, of writing is concerned, besides this all, like, you know, uh, beginning with the end in mind, it, uh, you know, uh, helps you three ways following a writing process. For example, it can help readers organize their ideas, number one. Number two, it can help them avoid any frustration, you know, and uh, any block, which uh, sometimes, you know, writers end up with, and lastly, it can help them, you know, use their time uh, more efficiently and more productively. Now, this process of writing, or take it this way, the process model of writing is not an absolute thing. 
I mean, uh, when I say absolute thing, it means that we do not have one single process, you know, which uh, I could uh, talk about today and advise you, well, you know, ABC is a process, you know, you can use it and uh, you can apply onto your, you know, writing uh, act and, you know, this is how you can produce things. No, not, uh, not exactly. I mean, uh, I would rather say that there are as many processes as many are writers. My process of writing can be different from your process of writing. Uh, process of writing can be different from her process of writing. Of course, we follow those processes, you know, which are more convenient, you know, for us. My definition of convenience, your definition of convenience, you know, of course, can be different. Exactly the same way, you know, my process selection and your process selection can be different, of course. But the end point has to be there that you are able, you know, after following some process, whatever it is, A, B, C or X, Y, Z, at the end of uh, following that process, you should be able to, uh, you know, uh, have such a piece, you know, which is uh, meant for some uh, topic, meant for some purpose, meant for some, you know, your readers. And of course, you, that, you know, uh, piece serves uh, the whole purpose. Different people, when they have talked about processes differently. And uh, before I, like, you know, uh, get you down to my, you know, process of writing, I would like to discuss with you two or three processes, you know, which people had been following. For example, some say that writing process is a three-step process. For example, they say writing is what? Inputting and then processing and then outputting. Now, inputting means what? Inputting actually is a collection stage in which, you know, they observe they observe uh, the you know environment. They observe their surroundings. You know they observe the target, for example, and they listen. I mean, they talk to people. See, and uh, the targets. You know, they have a conversation. They have a dialogue. They have a discussion with them, and this is how they collect data. So they collect data from observation. They collect data from listening, and of course, reading. Lots and lots and lots of reading. You know, reading. You can go to library. You can have your. I mean, the books lying inside your room, you can go through them. So this is how inputting means collection process. Collecting, you know, data from observation, from listening, from reading. And second uh, step or stage in this uh, process is processing. Now processing means what? Whatever they have collected, you know, in inputting, now they're going to analyze it. Why we analyze? Of course, there is one topic in our mind, there is one purpose in our mind, and there is one specific reader in our mind. And of course, there is one point of view in our mind. In other words, you know, there is one, you know, circle in our mind. And what we do actually in processing, we let all bits and pieces of information, you know, pass through that circle. So that, you know, there could be, there could be some, what we call that alignment. I mean, all these elements, your topic, you know, your purpose, your reader, your information, they could be aligned together. So in processing, they analyze information. Relevant things, they keep. Irrelevant things, you know, they kick out. And after analyzing, what they do is actually synthesize. Now, they put their ideas into some good words. Words which are easily understandable by their readers. Of course, in our last classes, we talked about readability and listenability. So keeping readability of the readers in mind, you know, of course, they choose words uh, to dress up their ideas. So this is processing stage. Inputting stage, they collect information through observation, through reading, through listening. Then, you know, processing stage. In processing stage, you know, they do two things. What they do, they analyze their data. Keeping the relevance in mind, they analyze the data. And number two, they synthesize the data. They put that information into words. And of course, organize, they organize in logical sequence and progression, you know, they put, let their information hang actually, starting and then of course ending. The third stage is outputting. Of course, outputting means, you know, now uh, they decide about uh, like uh, what, uh, you know, channel they should use, I mean, to express, for example, they should use, let's say, I mean, this electronic, uh, you know, medium, they should use this uh, print medium, you know. So this is how they output information. Or you can say they send whatever they've written, you know, for publishing. 
So this is one process which of course we can follow. Inputting, processing and outputting. Good one. Uh, I'm not saying that, you know, there's anything wrong in it. Okay. Some people say, well, writing process uh, shouldn't consist of three, just uh, three very generalized, uh, you know, stages or steps. Rather, they say that this writing process is uh, a name of four things, or you can say four steps or four stages. What they say, number one, planning. Number two, let's say organizing. Number three, activating. And number four, controlling. Now, this is another, you know, uh, what you call process of uh, writing. And some people call it, you know, communication by objective also. Of course, writing is one way of communicating also. So that is CBO as well, starting from planning. What is planning? Of course, planning means, you know, you plan out what you want to write about, actually. You plan, of course, the purpose of your writing. You plan, of course, who are your readers, actually. And then, you know, you, uh, uh, you know, uh, try uh, to find out the focus. I mean, are these three points aligned together or not? And then comes what? Organization. Organization means, see, you have decided, you have finalized your topic, the purpose, and of course, the readers. Now, what comes next? Organization means you ask yourself to write about so-and-so topic or to fulfill so-and-so purpose what type of information you will be needing and what are those information sources, for example. I mean, comes question in your mind that what procedures I should follow. I mean, should I sit down in my, you know, drying room by a fireplace, you know, over a cup of coffee and home-cooked cookies and a pen and paper and just, you know, keep, you know, uh, jotting down, you know, uh, and scribbling uh, my ideas and uh, there should be, you know, sufficient enough to be shared with your reader or, or, or something else. So, in organization, you decide about the procedures of your writing means you'll be getting information, let's say, from uh, some libraries. So, that is what organization means. Organization means you organize sources of information. Which libraries you'll visit, which, uh, you know, uh, let's say, uh, other sources, for example, let's say newspaper or encyclopedia or electronic media or internet, you know, you will be like, you know, searching uh, for information collection or you organize people. For example, if uh, you don't go for these uh, library stuff sources, of course, you can seek the help of different, you know, people. You can interview them right? And different equipment, you know, you're going to use, for example. Will you be using just pen and paper? Or you'll be needing, you know, kind of uh, computer thing. So all these equipment, if you, if you want to like uh, collect information, you know, by recording people, for example, then you'll be, of course, needing some, you know, electronic gadgets also. So all these things you organize. Now, four step process. Number one, you plan. You plan, of course, topic, purpose reader. Number two, organization means you organize information sources. Number three, that is activation or activating. What is this activation or activating? This is a goodwill point actually. Goodwill point means writing for your readers, not for yourself. If I'm a writer, uh, I shouldn't write for myself only. Of course, when I'm writing, it's kind of my own expression, actually. I'm like, you know, sort of uh, on the side of like, you know, dominating things. But still, you know, I, I have a product, you know, which I'm designing or crafting or creating or inventing, you know. And that product has to be used by somebody else. Of course, not by me. Yes, of course, I'll be, you know, reading myself also. But someone's going to use that product. So, activation is a stage in which you analyze your writing as a product, for example, that this product is going to be used by somebody and that somebody is, of course, your reader, right? So, like, generally speaking, activation means, you know, writer's efficiency, you know, writer's cooperation, for example, writer's consideration, for example, writer's truthfulness, for example, his trustworthiness, for example. So, all such good, 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 good elements, you know, and, of course, these 
things. I mean, just take it this way. You write something, you send it to me, and it's full of errors, for example. Some facts, you know, uh, they need revising, for example. Some, you know, lexical choices, you know, perhaps uh, lack uh, precision, for example. Some uh, structures, you know, for, for example, they are not, you know, uh, appropriate. Some grammatical stuff like, you know, uh, has got some errors which uh, which was which uh, was wanting uh, you know your attention but you perhaps overlooked and you know let your uh, reader uh, let your writing you know go to the bed so activation is something in which you revise for quality in which you know you rewrite your stuff so that that product which you are creating should be in best possible form so that you know your readers could have their trust and if they already have your trust that trust could be strengthened so this is how the third stage in this process is and the last one is controlling now tell me something if your writing is uh, perfuming for example it's music reading you it's rhythmic for example don't you think you'll be able to control your reader Controlling reader means if you want, if you wanted to persuade him, for example, or you wanted to change his behavior, for example. So if his he is persuaded, he his behavior is changed, for example. Don't you think you have control? Of course, yes. I mean, take the example of newspapers. Feature writers are there. Articles are there. They all have their circles, actually. Circle of influence. There is ABC columnist, for example. I'm his fan, you are his fan, we all are his fan. So that's his circle of influence. That circle of influence actually is what? In other words, he has controlled these many people. How he has controlled these many people? Of course, by his efforts. Let me tell you, hard work, efforts has no substitute. It has no substitute. So he has influenced, his influence is based on what? His hard work day and night which he has spent you know his efforts which you know he has put in so this is how he has controlled the behavior of his people he has created a circle actually in you know the society so there are people who only read him whatever he says blindly follow and it needs of course from the writer's point of view three very important uh, skills his consistency quality terms, consistency, his persistency, and of course, insistency also. So all the three, you know, traits, three qualities, writers, you know, they keep on beefing up, you know, their influence uh, onto, of course, the people. So this is our second, you know, process of, uh, you know, writing. The first one, inputting, processing, outputting. And the second process, planning, organizing, activating and controlling these two still some people say that uh, writing process again is a three step uh, you know phenomena in which pre writing writing and rewriting pre writing means you know everything you do before you sit down finally to uh, let your pen or let your fingers move on you know to the keyboards or your pen moves on to you know uh, move on to uh, the paper. Whatever you do before that, you decide about you know the topic, the purpose, the reader. You collect information. Every titly bitly thing you do before you know uh, the uh, you know final writing stuff. I mean to say drafting. That is pre-writing. Writing is what fine. Now you uh, you know finally go about your writing and then rewriting, as you know people say. Good writers are those who are rewriters, and then rewriters, and rewriters. The quality factor in mind, if quality factor forces you to rewrite more than two or three times, you have to, you have no choice. Because the product has to be, you know, which could, you know, reach your readers, and your readers, you know, could again say, wow. Once again, you know, something wonderful. So, this is, you know, the third process of writing. Keeping these three processes in mind, I'll not follow the first process, nor the second one, nor the third one. I'll give you a process in which there are six steps, not three, not four, not three, six steps. 
why, I mean, I'm choosing this process. Why not, you know, one of the three? Reason behind uh, that uh, I'll again use the same two, three words that choose a process which is uh, approachable, manageable, practical, and in a broad perspective, feasible also. And where things should be, uh, you know, not just, uh, I mean to say, idealistic, rather very, very realistic. For example, if I name those six steps, you would definitely say, oh, wow, this is more than a process, actually. For example, invention. Number two, collection. And number three, organization. So first step in my process is invention. And second step is collection. And third step is organization. Now, after these three comes drafting. First one is inventing. Number two is collecting. Number three is organizing. Number four is drafting. And next is what? Revising. And the final is proofreading. So these are six steps. When I say invention, invention means, you know, three things. Now, we'll, we'll be speaking very clear about follow a process, which is six step, starting from inventing, collecting, organizing, drafting, uh, revising, and proofreading. Now we are going to talk about what is inventing. You invent three things. Number one, set a purpose of your writing, the reason behind your writing, the logic behind your writing. What's there in your mind which you want to write for your readers? The purpose. Number two, identify your readers. Who you want to write for? You want to write for children? You want to write for adults? Who you want to write for? You want to write for uh, technical guys? You want to write for non-technical guys? You want to write for highly educated people, semi-educated people? So ask yourself you know, these questions. And number three, and very important, and what is that? Find out the topic of your writing. The topic of your writing, which is very, very important. What are good topics? Look, you should be very, very, very clear today that there's a huge difference. Rather, I would say these two are opposite things. I have already probably quoted this example in my some previous lecture, but today I would like to like you know explain it further that uh, subject and topic are two different things. Or you can say area of investigation and the question in that area of investigation are two different things. When we say media, take this example. Now, media is something I don't think if I ask you that, come on, write me, you know, 500 word or 1000 word, words, you know, on media, it's uh, approachable or manageable. I mean, it has so many faces. You may ask me this question, which media you're talking about? Are you talking about electronic or print? So, of course, there's a question. So, area or subject is a different thing, but topic is a different thing. And if I say uh, society, for example, write on society. Again, the question will be, excuse me, what society you are talking about? Are you talking about rural, urban, inside urban, privileged, less privileged, the, you know, educated people inside the society, uneducated people inside the society, the volunteers inside the society, people who are working for community, for example. So, these many questions are there. If I say the influence of media, again, the question will be, I mean, should I go for the positive or the negative? Or should I simply ask myself, is there any influence of media? So, please keep in mind, if you say education, if you say, you know, journalism, if you say psychology, for example, this can be an area. This is a subject, actually. It's not a topic. Topic is the one which is practical, approachable, and manageable. These are the three characteristics of a good topic. 
And I remember my teacher used to say that, uh, and of course, uh, this uh, stuff is available, like, you know, as a piece of advice in books as well, that when you uh, approach your topic, make sure that you uh, divide all the keywords of your topic by three. I mean, when I say, let's say the topic is uh, influence of media on society, this is something, you know, you want to write on. So, apply the formula. Divide the keywords of your topic by three. Now, for example, one keyword is influence, second keyword is media, third keyword is society. Now, divide this influence, you know, by three. You want to talk about uh, positive influence or negative influence, or simply you want to ask, is there any influence? So divide your topic by three. You want to talk about, let's say, negative effects of, you know, this, uh, you know, uh, this uh, media thing. Now let's come down to the second keyword, which is media itself. Again, the same question. Print media, electronic. Let's say you choose electronic. Now my question is, local or international? Of course, media is a whole world out there. Like, you know, how come, you know, you, you could be able to limit uh, or write about the media all across the world. Of course, it's not approachable, manageable. It's not practical. So ask yourself, local or international? Let's say you go for, you know, international. Okay. Now ask yourself, you know, there can be hundred many questions actually, you know. But ask yourself the time factor, for example. I mean, uh, morning transmission, you know, evening transmission, or uh, late evening transmission, or what? Or prime time transmission. Let's say the prime time transmission. Now comes the society. Now, which society you're talking about? Rural or urban? Let's say you choose for urban, for example. Now, inside urban, you know, you have privileged or less privileged. Let's say you choose privileged. Inside privileged, you know, you have uh, males and females. Inside males and females, let's say you go for, you know, um, females. Inside females, you know, you have age factor. You have, you know, uh, let's say teenagers, you know, you have adults, for example. You have not school going, you have school going, for example. You know, let's say you go for school going. It means, you know, that will, there will be like, you know, teenagers. Now again, go for boys or girls. There are hundred many questions. Hundred many questions. And answer to each and every question or answering each and every question actually is moving towards, you know, making your topic practical, approachable, and manageable. Now, final product of your topic will be, previously it was influence of media on society. Now, look at this. The topic is what? Uh, let's say the negative influence of uh, the international electronic media, rather, the, uh, 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 you know, international electronic media tra prime time transmission on, let's say, the uh, school going t uh, school uh, school going teenagers of the uh, you know privileged uh, part of so and so society look at this i mean now people say process is a focus also finding out your focus of writing so don't you think your job is now extremely focused Previously, it was what? Sort of horizontal expansion. Going from, I mean, just, just moving, moving widely onto the surface. After, you know, asking these many questions and limiting your topic, narrowing it down to this uh, much, actually made it what? A vertical flow. I mean, just, they say like, you know, inch a hole, miles dug down inch a hole miles dug down you're like you're not digging this way you are miles down your focus will be very much there and and the purpose which you want to serve look when i say that uh this uh you know uh writing should have a focus writer should have a focus what actually i mean I mean, 
that readers they should be able to understand that my writer will not be talking about A or B or C or D. He'll be talking about M, N, O only. I mean, this is what actually focus is. Otherwise, what? They, they're, they're like uh, expectation, level of ex expectation is going to be very, very high if your topic is broad in nature, is general in nature. Your job actually will be rather, of course, quite big. You won't be able, I'm into, in limited amount of time, in limited length of your writing, encompass or, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, manage all possible pieces of information for your readers. So try to narrow down, you know, your topic to make it practical, approachable and manageable. Now, the first step of our writing process is what? Invention. And what we studied in invention, three things you invent. I mean, you find out on which topic you want to write and you narrow it down. How do we narrow it down? You underline the keywords and you divide your keywords by three. Number one. Number two, the purpose of your writing. I mean, the purpose is cause and effect. The purpose is, uh, you know, you want to examine or you want to analyze. The purpose is that you want to educate your people, you want to entertain them, you want to persuade them, you want to explain things, illustrate things, you know. All many of these are purposes of your writing. And of course, we'll, we are going to study this purpose stuff in detail in my, you know, somewhere uh, in, in the process of writing. And third thing is your reader. In my previous classes, I talked about the types of readers. They are, that's very general, actually. Uh, you know, uh, classification of your readers that they are, some are skeptics and others are skimmer. So a good writing is the one which serves the needs or fulfills the needs of the both. So this is what your invention is. Next comes collection. Now collection means, as the word suggests, you collect information. You, in this stage, after finalizing your topic, your reader, and uh, your purpose. Next comes, okay, where from I can find information for my, you know, writing. It's a very, very big question. Very big question. That, uh, and it uh, really troubles a lot at times that uh, find your topic. You're very clear about your topic. You're very clear about, you know, your purpose and your readers. but. Uh, where from I can, you know, bring this uh, information. This is collection stage. Now, there are two major sources of information for writers. The first source we call internal information source, and second one is external information source. What is internal information source? For your surprise, internal information source is you yourself as a writer. That is internal information source. Look, you have spent quite many years of your life with your eyes open. I mean, analyzing things, observing things, experimenting things, experiencing things. And Allah has, you know, uh, gifted you with five uh, senses, wonderful channels from where information has penetrated day and night into you. So, in your past 15, 16 years, you have collected enough data and stored in your mind that that will be enough to write, you know, 9, 10 books, frankly speaking. So, it's you actually which is the biggest source of information, I believe. But the question is only one, that uh, do we trust that, inf have we trusted that information? Problem is, we do not actually trust, usually. I mean, you as a writer, you know, have never trusted your own source of information. You never asked yourself this question, do I have enough stock? If yes, how to bring this one out? So today I'll give you a method to bring this stock of information out from your mind and, uh, you know, uh, transfer it onto a piece of paper or onto your computer screen. 
well there are three uh, you know uh, methods to bring the stock which is stored in you out on a piece of paper don't take it uh, you know as if i'm kidding no 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 i'm very 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 serious about let's uh, you know discuss those three methods uh, with the help of which you, know, you can bring this information out from your mind. Number one is free writing. And number two is probing. And number three is brainstorming. Now, what is free writing? This is something very interesting. And probably you never tried it before. I'll tell you today how to free write. Some people say free writing means, you know, I mean, take a pen and paper and, you know, start writing. And people say like, you know, well, very experienced and, you know, highly successful writers, they always free write. Well, I don't believe. Uh, free writing actually means jotting down or s scribbling, you know, your points on a piece of paper, it, which we also call as writing without considering any rules. Writing without rules. I mean, when you are free writing, it means you are not going to, uh, you know, uh, give any, you know, attention to the spelling mistakes you know you are making the grammatical mistakes you are making you know the uh, sentence structures they are right or wrong your information is you know factual or fictional you know uh, i mean the punctuation thing you know and the, the format thing the paragraphing thing nothing and nothing and nothing you give any consideration to what you do is actually with free writing you bring that very thought in your mind which forced you to write something. Let that come out from your mind. Don't worry about language. Don't worry about language. And let me tell you one thing. Don't worry about English, Urdu, Punjabi. Don't worry about. Free writing actually means bringing that thought in mind which actually forced you to write something for your readers. You can bring that and you can, you know, uh, that idea you can uh, lay down in Punjabi, in Urdu or in English, doesn't matter. Language is no question actually. And the quality of language is no question, you know. The correctness is no question in free writing. How to do it now? I would say three, four times practice in a week and take my words, you know, you will be a good writer. Or at least you will be on a way to be a good writer. What is that? Set your clock to five minutes. Have a paper and pencil in your hand, okay? Sit down in some comfortable chair and set your clock to five minutes and then start writing. Don't stop. Start writing. Whatever comes to your mind, start writing. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Even if nothing comes to your mind, don't stop. Keep repeating the previous word. If you're stuck, keep repeating the previous word. If you if there is no word, just keep writing, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, till the time, you know, you get another idea. You are not going to stop for five minutes till the clock beeps, time is up. There you surrender. Fine. This is what, you know, you have produced. Please keep in mind, in free writing, we don't care nothing about the language correctness. We don't care nothing about, are we writing sane or insane? Doesn't matter. What you need to do is keep writing. This is sort of a practice, you know, which I'm telling you. Do it two, three times a week. You'll have a kick start. This free writing kicks you start. Okay. Maybe like, you know, when you uh, start reading what you have written, maybe you would say it's nonsense. It's trivial. It's unstructured. Then what? Then what? But somewhere, somewhere, I mean, your language, I'm not going to use, for me, nothing is worthless. But I'm going to use your language. If you feel this is what the garbage thing, you know, you have brought it out. But somewhere in that garbage which you call, there is that line present, or that word present, or that idea present, which was reason. For your writing. That idea, the original in your mind, that idea is your asset. 
take that idea out or highlight that idea. That was the reason in your mind. That was actually the question in your mind which was ringing bell. Hey, come on, pen and paper, write something for your reader. That you have, you know, taken out. If it doesn't happen in your know, first attempt, no worries. Try next time. Try next time. Bring that original out. You know why? Look, what happens that uh, if you ask yourself a question, look, I want to write on a media thing, and you start reading. I'm not saying don't read. Rather, I'm a fan of, you know, readers and, of course, reading. But what I'm trying to say is, you know, when you start reading, what happens? That original thought, which was in your mind, that will be lost somewhere. On media, when you start, you know, reading A writer, B writer, C writer, X writer, Y writer, Z writer, then what happens? That original thought is lost somewhere. And you will be lost in the readings. Your first responsibility as a good writer is that question, that reason, which was hanging in your mind, which was ringing bell, bring that out on a piece of paper. And that is something which is your direction also. That I am now going to read a lot many book, a lot many authors or writers to do what? To, you know, get information about this original thought which was in your mind. That is what free writing is. Do it every day. Ask your friends also. Do it every day. If not every day, two, three times a week. This is something wonderful to get kick-started. Now, second uh, method of bringing information from your stock is probing. Now, here I would like to show you, illustrate this point, probing, with the help of some, you know, slides. But keep in mind, probing means you live in your, you know, house, you live in your neighborhood, you live in a community, you live in a city, you live in a country, okay? Now, ask yourself questions. Why, you know, A is different from B? Why A is mine, B is yours? You know, why A is blue and B is yellow? I mean, ask questions. A lot, many questions about, you know, uh, about, about that very thing, you know, which you want to write about. Probing thing. Ask yourself questions. Now, I'm, I have prepared actually a list for your consideration that, you know, this is how we can ask questions and can find, you know, information about. If you take, uh, you know, a look onto your screen that what probing stuff actually is. And one more important thing. There are some questions on the screen. Plus, in brackets, you know, I have written the name of that question. Or you can say the direction of that question. Or you can say the purpose of that question. I mean, if you ask, for example, the first is, what does X mean? So if this question in your mind is, and you start writing about, I mean, answering this question, what does X mean? It means you're defining it. That is called writing on definitions. That your purpose is that you want to define things. Come back to the screen. What does X mean? This will be definition. Ask yourself a question, what are the various features of X? It will be description. Third, what are the component parts of X? This will be simple analysis. How is X made or done? Process. How should X be made or done? Directional analysis. What is the essential function of X? This is functional analysis. What are the causes of X? Causal analysis. What are the consequences of X? Causal analysis. What are the types of X? Classifications. How is X like or unlike Y? This is comparison. Next question can be, what's the present status of X? Now, this will be comparison. Next one, what is the significance of X? This will be interpretation. And uh, what are the facts about X? This is reportage. How did X happen? You are trying to narrate, actually, things. And what kind of person is X? Here, the characterization, the profile, perhaps, you know, you're interested in. And what is my personal response to X? Now, this is reflection. You read about X, and now you are reflecting upon what you read. 
or what is my memory of X? This is reminiscent. I mean, your past experiences, you know, with the uh, with that X, that could be anything. That could be a person. That could be a place. That could be a thing. And uh, what is the value of X? This is evaluation. And what are the essential major points or features of X? This is the summary. And what case can be made for an original X? This is persuasion. Now, did you see that these questions, this is just one possibility actually, but at the same time, these are 20 very, very important probing questions. You have topic in your mind, now start asking questions about. And then, keeping these 20 questions in mind, plus the next in brackets, you know, the purpose which I have written, keeping that in mind, you would be able to uh, at least, you know, go about finding the answers of these questions. And therefrom, you know, your own answers, you can share the same questions, you know, with your friends, for example. That if you want to describe X, for example, so how do you feel that you know it should be described? You can ask your friend, put up the same question to your friend and ask him, like, you know, how they feel, how can they describe if you want to compare X and Y? You compare, ask your friends, ask your brothers and sisters, ask people who live in your neighborhood, put up uh, you know the same questions to them and see what they say. Compare, you know, your piece of information and then you know read some conclusions the primary conclusions, then of course you can dig out further uh, by, you know, uh, reading and, you know, uh, and a lot many other, you know, information sources. So this is how you see that there are different methods of uh, using your own information stock, which is stored actually in your own mind. At this point, I'm not asking you go to library, what I'm asking you is, Bring the very information or utilize the very information which is very much in your mind first. And then, you know, you can beef it up. You know, you can, you know, get more information, you know, to explain it further. You know, you can get some technical, like, you know, data further from, you know, different sources, which, of course, I'll discuss with you as external information sources. The third and the last method for internal information source, the first was free writing. That is uh, sort of, uh, you know, an exercise uh, which needs uh, doing it again and again till you perfect it. And the second one, you saw, ask yourself questions about your topic and try to find out answers. Ask your friends questions. Ask your, let's say, siblings questions. Ask, you know, questions to people in your neighborhood and you, you collect information. Third one is brainstorming. Now, what is brainstorming? Brainstorming, again, the same thing, hold the paper and pencil in your, mind, uh, in your hand and uh, let ideas flow down onto that paper. Again, in brainstorming, we do not check relevance of our content. Let's say the word flower you want to collect information about. Flowers. Now what? Have a piece of paper. In the middle of that piece of paper, write the word flower, okay? And you know, shine out, prepare a cluster, for example, you know, let's say the literal, you know, use of uh, definition of flower, the figurative definition of flower, it's a social use, it's medicinal use, the types of flowers, the botanical types, for example, then uh, ceremonial use of flowers. So a lot, many things, you know, you are clustering out around that flower. You are not doing one sin. I call it a sin for brainstorming if, look here, what I said about brainstorming. Brainstorming means let your ideas flow from here down onto your paper. This is a continuous process. It uh, should not be stopped by silly questions that the ideas which are coming down are relevant or irrelevant. No, don't ask this question. Let your ideas flow. They may be relevant, they may be irrelevant. You and me are nobody, I mean, to, you know, ask these questions. Why? Then the process will stop. Brainstorming will not happen. Now, here, I would like to show you, you know, uh, one, uh, or rather two ways, you know, actually, uh, when we brainstorm, then how we control information. One way is listing. And second, I uh, have named the word clustering. Listing means some people 
you know, they may feel like uh, uh, numbering ideas. So they, they move vertically. They write flower, the word at the top of the page, okay? And then the ideas come. So what they do, they keep numbering them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is how like, you know, they do. Clustering opposite to this is what? You write the word, you know, flower in the middle of your page and you, the rays, the sun rays, like, you know, they go out. You prepare then a cluster. So this is how, you know, your brainstorming works. Exactly the way we, uh, we, we uh, like in uh, the ritual which we follow for free writing, that uh, don't worry about uh, correction, language correction. Don't worry about, uh, you know, uh, ideas are factual or not factual. Don't worry about sanity or insanity. Forget about, just keep writing for that set out time, five minutes. Don't stop before your clock beeps. Exactly the same way in brainstorming, of course, we don't follow exactly the same way, but, 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 in brainstorming, we don't ask ourselves this question that my information is relevant or irrelevant. No. This is a second stage of the brainstorming. Once you've finished storming your brain, then comes the question, hold a, you know, a, a color pencil in your hand and encircle those points which are extremely relevant a relevant then underline those points first i said encircle those points which are a relevant to the top and t relevant then underline those points which are secondarily relevant i mean they are not that way relevant but yes they do have some relevance and cut those points which are irrelevant see when you have a separate stage to analyze uh, what is relevant and not relevant, then why to do these two different things simultaneously in brainstorming? So please, when you brainstorm, don't ask this question that my information is relevant or not relevant. So this is how hopefully information through these three methods will come out. Especially probing thing. This is very, very, very important. Free writing, fine. Brainstorming, fine. Probing thing is very important, actually. Asking yourself questions, asking your, uh, I mean, asking the people in living in that environment those questions. This is something very important. And of course, you can, uh, I mean, of course, you will be rather, your approach is sort of, probing is actually what? It makes you more investigative, actually. It makes you more research-oriented, actually. That from the very first step, you uh, are asking, you know, questions and trying to find out answers. You'll be very, very clear about actually uh, the topic, the purpose, you know, and for people who are you writing for. So, dear students, today, what we did actually, today we talked about different writing processes, how people take differently this writing process. Some people say this is inputting, processing and outputting. Some say or follow planning, organizing, activating and processing. And some people take it on a very broader level, pre-writing, writing and rewriting. And the process which we are following is a six-step process or six-stage process, which is inventing, collecting and organizing and drafting, and then revising and proofreading. And we, uh, we have studied in, uh, collect, in uh, inventing stage that we, three things we do in inventing. Number one, we decide about the purpose, the topic, and the readers. In collecting stage, we, uh, I told you that there are two sources of information, internal and external source. And we studied today only internal source. Internal source means three things that, of course, internal source is you. And the methods we studied, you know, are three to well this information out from you. And they were, number one, that you free write, the free writing. Number two, you know, you probe, the probing. And number three, uh, brainstorm, the brainstorming. 
and this is how you collect information. In my next class, I'll talk about external source of information plus the other, you know, four uh, writing uh, steps or stages, uh, and then you know we'll complete this important topic. With this, thank you very much. Uh, see you next time. Take care of yourself. Bye bye.